children of the future. The really annoying future. You must teach them well and let them lead the way, and you do that by hiding dick jokes in their cartoons. It's easy to forget watching kids' movies that they're made by adults with naughty brains who will take literally any opportunity to talk about erections in front of children. There's something inherently wrong with that, but gosh, it happens more than you'd think. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 incredibly filthy jokes you won't believe are hidden inside children's movies. Number 10, a drug-addled past, the Santa Claus. Putting aside the fact that the Santa Claus includes Tim Allen straight up murdering Santa Claus is pretty much a nostalgic, family-friendly treat. It also comes ready-made with an interesting little drug gag that somehow got past the Disney censors, a nice reference for all the mums and dads who were dragged out to see the film. When Allen's character Scott starts to fly like Santa, which is a superpower I guess Santa has, his cute and innocent son comments, whoa, you're flying. Scott's retort, it's okay, I'm used to it, I lived through the 60s. So Basically, Alan's Disney dad character did a load of LSD as a teen, and so could you, kids! Number 9. A computer has an orgasm, the brave little toaster to the rescue. Yes, there really is a scene where a computer has the digital equivalent of a fully-fledged orgasm. I wish I was joking. Although some might argue that the scene I'm referring to only accidentally conveys an orgasm. Nope, you're f***ing wrong. There's no way that the people who made this movie didn't do this on purpose. Said computer begins by mentioning how his memory banks are being stroked, then proceeds to make pleasurable noises like woo and that feels sort of good to name a few, before he adds, I feel something happening inside of me, and if that's not hammering the point home enough, at that point the printer explodes with sheets of white paper. Subtle. Number 8. Small Boy Talks About Vajayjay's Monster House Despite being aimed directly at the children's market, the excellent and underappreciated Monster House contains one bizarre and very specific reference to the Lady Vagina. Seriously. During one scene in which our cast of characters, who are all children by the way, are discussing the anatomy of the titular Monster House, one kid says, well if those are the teeth, then that's the tongue, and that must be the uvula, whilst pointing at the chandelier. Oh, so this must be a female house, replies another kid. <laughs> the uvula is that dangly thing in your throat. The kid has mixed it up with the vulva, which is the lady genitals. Number 7. Buzz Lightyear pretty much gets an erection. Toy Story 2. However you look at the end of Toy Story 2, it's hard to argue against the fact that there's a part of this splendid Pixar sequel in which Star Command's Space Ranger Buzz Lightyear gets a woody. Not that one. During the scene where Buzz is introduced to cowgirl Jessie's talent, she's just as adept at leaping around Andy's room in an action style as he is, he stares at her in an awed manner before his wings pop up and start flashing. You know, like dicks do. Number 6. Shaggy Talks Drugs Scooby-Doo Look, everyone knows that Shaggy loves pot. Even though it's never shown or depicted in any of the episodes of the TV show or made explicit, just… I mean… come on. Look at his joyful, hazy expression, his laid-back gait, the constant f***ing munchies. Anyway, given that 2000's live-action Scooby-Doo movie was aimed at children, it wasn't as if the filmmakers suddenly found themselves able to expose Shaggy in his true form, but they did go as far as to make a reference to his secret habits. During one scene, when Shaggy is on a plane, he meets a girl and they bond over a mutual love of Scooby snacks. When he asks her name, she tells him it's Mary Jane. Like, that is my favourite name, he says, wide-eyed. Mary Jane is a common nickname for marijuana. Number 5. Sugar Honey Iced Tea, Madagascar Imagine you're faced with a singular problem. You really want to use the word shit in your animated children's movie about talking animals, but there's no way to do it because nobody's going to let you and they think you're weird. Somehow, though, the filmmakers behind Madagascar managed to find a way. They realised they could use the power of initials to achieve their dreams. During one particular scene in which Alex and Marty are running towards each other on a beach to the theme of Chariots of Fire, Marty realises that Alex's loving strides aren't so loving after all, switches directions and yells, oh shit sugar honey iced tea. Spell it out now. Number 4. Genie talks about Aladdin and Jasmine f***ing Aladdin and the King of Thieves. If you've never seen Aladdin and the King of Thieves, that's a shame, it's got John Reese davies in it. Watch it, you bastards. But don't do it with kiddies, because Genie makes a sex reference. And just how sly a sex ref are we talking? Well, during Aladdin and Jasmine's wedding sequence, there's an earthquake, to which Genie casually mutters the line, I thought the earth wasn't supposed to move until the honeymoon. <laughs> Number 3. Two female cars flash Lightning McQueen cars. More Pixar-related smut here because the world's favourite animation studio can't keep their filthy minds under lock and key. Cars is thought to be one of their less inspired movies, but it has its moments, including one standout eye-opener where a couple of groupies decide to expose themselves to main character Lightning McQueen, in a strictly vehicular sense, of course. Yes, during a scene at the beginning of the movie when we're being shown Lightning McQueen's badass driving skills and associated popularity, a couple of convertibles, named Mia and Tia, if you're interested, flash in with their headlights in quick succession. Way to go teaching kids the best way to appreciate their heroes, their Pixar, with boobs. 
Number two, chef admits a sexual fetish for vegetables, Ratatouille. So here's a reason never to eat at Chef Skinner's restaurant. During one scene in the glorious Ratatouille, head chef and stereotypical angry Frenchman Skinner comes into the kitchen to find lead character Linguini messing around in the ingredients cupboard. What are you doing in here, he shouts. I'm just familiarizing myself with, you know, the vegetables and such, says Linguini. Get out, yells Skinner. One can get too familiar with vegetables, you know. So either he has personal experience with being over-familiar with vegetables, or he knows someone who was. And which vegetable would that be exactly? And the answer is a cucumber. It's always a cucumber. And number one, Lord Farquaad Shrek. How on earth did anyone get a character called Lord Farquaad in a kid's movie about an ogre's personal journey to validation? If for some reason you're a bit confused as to what is being implied here, let me enlighten you. Farquaad sounds an awful lot like F Quad. At least it does according to the scriptwriters, who, according to many sources, purposely assigned this name to the character in an attempt to sneak a really bad word into a children's movie. And they sort of got away with it, didn't they? As the villain of the movie, Farquaad's name is required to be said a lot, and yet nobody at DreamWorks seems to have noticed. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.